Waking up at the hospital without knowing exactly what is wrong with him our main character Kuzunaji goes to the mirror to look at his face as he is there a nurse and the doctor arrive and they call out for him he turns to look at them and he goes to bed so they can test him just as the doctor does his experiment it's obvious that he is so shocked about what is happening with Kuzunaji the doctor looks at his result in awe telling Kuzunaji that he can't believe it he tells him that he had lost consciousness and had gone into critical condition due to a traffic accident but shockingly Kuzunaji is completely healed the doctor comments that it is almost as if he was healed by holy magic well it is not like Kuzunaji is shocked at what had happened he thinks about why he was magically healed and he reveals that his body automatically heals him with holy magic however he is still bothered by the traffic accident he looks at the doctor and asks him if his magic power was depleted as a result of the accident the doctor doesn't understand what he is saying he asks Kuzunaji what he means by magic power he tells the doctor that during the calamity before he was brought to the hospital he fighting monsters at that point the doctor knows that something is wrong he looks at him and asks him if he could tell them his name and the current year they are in contrary to how the doctor has been calling him Kuzunaji he reveals that his name is Ikakami Manadu and they should be in the year 1970. He doesn't get his name in the year correctly so the doctor assumes that he may be affected by a sequela a sequela is an aftermath of an injury which could have affected his brain they also feel it could be a case of memory loss or impairment, so the doctor tells him that he is wrong and his name is in Ikakami Manadu instead his name is Kuzunaji Manadu also they are in the year 2022 and not 1970. It sounds like lies to his ears is his name really Kuzunaji Manadu if yes how did that happen to him you can imagine the thoughts going through his mind and his confusion is so obvious on his face also he can't believe they are in 2020 that's more than 40 years from his last memory however looking at the environment he has found himself it doesn't look like they are lying the hospital has a bed a shelf and even a television which couldn't have been available in the 1970s so he feels they aren't lying he looks at the television wondering if that's how it now looked he watches the news airing on the television and comments that the television is so thin and the image is really clean he sees a calendar around him and he looks at it indeed they are in the year 2022 he looks at the nurse's hands and finds her reporting all the medical procedures on her tablet he wonders what is the device in her hand because he has never seen it before all all the circumstances around him put together it is obvious he is no longer in his timeline and he wonders if he is really in the future it turns out the doctor knows about the calamity he claims the world is suffering from the doctor further enlightens him that the calamity he is talking about occurred about 50 years ago and it hasn't happened again since that time he is shocked it really seems like the shock isn't the best way for him to express what he is feeling at that moment he asks again to be sure he has heard what the doctor says and repeats that the calamity has hasn't happened again since then he asks the doctor what happened to the monsters that had attacked back then. The doctor tells him that although there are still monsters in their world they aren't so many so everywhere is really peaceful that sounds like great news to Kuzunaji it really means that the world has eventually achieved peace he is glad about it and he comments thank goodness it is indeed happy news that the world has achieved peace but the doctor tells him that news also means that the personality he calls himself Akakami Manadu died during the great calamity. About 50 years Years ago Ikakami Manadu sacrificed himself to save the world the doctor tells him that there is no way he could be a Kakami Manadu and he is indeed not him he realizes that the time he died during the battle he really died and he got reincarnated as Kuzunaji Manadu that fact is clear to him but he doesn't understand why he had to reincarnate or even how he reincarnated some weeks later he is released from the hospital and he goes home as he enters the house he sees that he is in Kuzunaji Manado's room which is now his room he re reads through a book there and he finds out that Kuzunaji's parents passed away when he was a child and he was kicked out by his foster parents and sent to attend a boarding school and since then he has been getting by with his parents inheritance he reads through and he feels that during his days of magic he has never heard anything like reincarnation magic so there is no such thing as reincarnation magic the only way he could have reincarnated was by the work of God or by chance he sees Kuzunaji's school's identity card and he sees that that the young boy attends Kamumi Magic Academy he doesn't know much about magic academies because back in his days there was no reason for magic academies to exist but he seems to be interested in what magic academies mean and what they do he sees something vibrating by his legs and he wonders what it is he finds a cell phone in the bag and he picks it up he sees that he has a call from someone whose number is saved with 
The name Tedano Khan looking at the name he wonders who is the caller he doesn't know what a cell phone is and he even doesn't know how to use when he thinks of what to do with the phone he gets anxious and nervous as the phone ring in his hand and he eventually decides that since he doesn't know who the caller is or how to pick up the call who cares about it he throws the phone back on the bed as the call ends Tadano sends him a message telling him that he heard he has been discharged from the hospital already and Kuzanagi should come to school already because he doesn't have enough money although Kuzanagi doesn't even read the message he also knows he is going to attend school because that's his new personality he goes to the magic academy dressed in the uniform as he arrives at the gate he looks at the school's environment and he sees all the students playing and laughing around and he thinks about the fact that he is going to school as an adult and he says that the reality gets his heart pumping he feels it is great and all but he isn't used to that lifestyle as he walks around he sees some students practicing how to use magic the student uses the fire magic on a figure and Kuzanagi watches them he wonders what the hell is that magic he is looking at he keeps thinking about what that magic power is because he isn't familiar with it the magic is so weak and it doesn't look like it has any power he puts his hand on his head screaming that is such a disappointing the other students passing by him watch him weirdly as he reacts weirdly he wonders if that's how the magic in that world is and he can't imagine being that weak he hopes his assumptions wouldn't be a reality he says that compared to a newbie magician from his time the magic power he has just seen is like a tenth of a newbie in his world he keeps asking asking himself random questions like if the student's mages can actually succeed as a magician he feels that for the magic to have declined this much they are really drunk on peace and they feel they won't have to go to war again he eventually enters into class 2a which is Kuzanaga's class he enters the class and sits down for one thing he is excited about the class because he says it is like a blast from the past he wonders if he actually has friends in that class then he suddenly receives a hit from the back that answers that question it's not really like he has friends but he can be sure that he has bullies Tedano hits him he calls him a and asks if he has ignored his text Tedano's friends remind him that he is just Kuzanagi he looks at them and asks them who they are Tedano gets angry and kicks Kuzanaga's table he screams at how could Kuzanagi forget him and that he is Tedano Tedana calls Kuzanagi a powerless piece of trash and also puts his finger in Kuzanaga's eyes Kuzanagi remembers that he had indeed received a call from a Tedano he assumes that Tadano is a friend of his and asks Tadano if they are friends Tadano says he has indeed remembered who they are he asks Kuzanagi if he knows what being a friend means and he raises his hand forward at Kuzanagi expecting that Kuzanagi will give him money the same way the former Kuzanagi has been paying his expenses little does he know that this version of Kuzanagi isn't like the former this Kuzanagi is actually quite clueless about what he is saying he holds his hand laughing with Tarano that his friends they should get along well but Tadano drags his hand from Kuzanagi friendly gesture telling him that is not what he is expecting he tells Kuzanagi that he wants money and he should hand over some money to him he goes nearer and drags Kuzanaga's clothes he tells him to hurry up and give him the money and he tells him that he has plenty of money left from his parents inheritance so he should drop some of them it's at this point that Kuzanagi realizes the situation his former personality he was in the former Kuzanagi doesn't have friends or parents and he was being bullied at school Tedano feels Kuzanagi is pretending to be ignorant he tells Kuzanagi not to get full of himself and he attempts to hit him however before the hit gets to Kuzanaga's body a very pretty young girl who is radiantly beautiful enters the class and greets everyone Tedano looks at her and decides decides to leave Kuzanagi he however warns Kuzanagi that he shouldn't forget the money Kuzanagi rearranges his clothes and he returns to his seat the class starts the day and the teacher is teaching them about the great calamity the teacher narrates that the great calamity started in 1979 and the great sage Akakami Manadu sacrificed himself to end the calamity it was the final calamity which is also known as the great calamity and during this period monsters appeared all over the world and humanity despaired but the pioneer of magic called the great sage Akakami. Manadu fought differently he didn't give in to the monsters at all and he defeated all the monsters by himself at last Akakami confronted the family's boss who is the demon god Akakami crushed the demon god even at the risk of his own life and since then the calamity didn't return the next step of the class is the question of who is Akakami Manadu the beautiful young girl Mizua happily raises up her hands to answer the question and the teacher gives her permission she says that Akakami is the only survivor of 
of the first calamity, and he is also the first magician and the reason the Kamumi Magic Academy was built in the first place she explains that he is the hero of the world and the idol of every magician the teacher commends Mizua that she is correct indeed Akakami was the only survivor of the first calamity and the first human to use magic and their magic academy was created to turn out many more magicians like Akakami Manadu he is also the greatest human in history the teacher tells them that the topic will come out in their test however Kuzanagi is uncomfortable with that discussion he screams no in his mind hoping that they will stop since he is the one they are talking about it looks so embarrassing to him he claims that he didn't expect to be tortured that way the other students look at him wondering what is wrong with him and he regrets coming to that school in the first place however he admits that just just as the doctor has told him earlier they are in a world of peace but he asks if that's the reason the magicians in that world have become so weak the peace in that world gets him uncomfortable the school bell rings and the teacher announces that it will be the end of their class that day he tells them that the following day they will have their magic power assessment Tadano goes to meet Kuzanagi he asks him if he heard what the teacher has said about magic power assessment he reminds him that he is useless at magic and he feels it will be fun for him to see how dogs should Kuzanagi Naga's magic is Kuzanagi is so uncomfortable with Tadano's unnecessary talks he wonders if Taano should shut up for once however he feels there is no point for him to remain at the school and he turns to leave as he leaves Tadano speaks behind him and asks him if his late parents have no magic powers too he calls Kuzanagi an orphan bastard saying he has forgotten if he had remembered he wouldn't have asked about his parents he and his friends laugh Kuzanagi and Kuzanagi turns and calls them Tadano gets angry and screams at Kuzanagi he tells him to get off his high horse and tries to injure him with magic the magic power seems so huge and the students know what could result if such power lands on Kuzanagi they scream at Tadano asking him if he is really going to use magic in the classroom he throws the magic at Kuzanagi asking him to die and instead of dodging the attack Kuzanagi remains there Mizua jumps and she tells Kuzanagi that it would be dangerous for him to let that magic hit him but Kuzanagi doesn't leave and he watches as the magic comes nearer to him Mizua screams at Tedano warning him that he can't use magic over a mere issue between himself and his colleague she begs him that someone will get hurt if he does as he is threatening he tells her that Kuzanagi was the one who was trying to pick a fight with him so it isn't his fault the smoke of the magic covers the entire class everyone is anticipating that Kuzanagi will be dead or terribly injured from the attack they look toward the smoke and they see it is reducing until Kuzanagi come comes out of the smoke and he comes out of it without any injury burns or pain he tells Tedono that he got him and Tadano is shocked that he came out unscathed he wonders how that is possible after Kuzanagi has taken his magic head on the other students are terrified and they wonder what is happening in that class well if it's level one magic Kuzanagi can defend it with his magical barrier and he doesn't need to use magic actively before he can defend such weak magic he says that he has tolerated Tadano's excesses because he is a child but he still thinks Tadano should be punished for what he has done his anger forms furry behind him his strength is echoed in the class and even and Tedano gets terrified before Kuzanagi does anything to him the magic in the barrier is stronger than what any of the students have experienced before he gums their bodies to the floor and they all can't move from their initial position they comment respectively that they can't move and they ask each other what is happening to them they have never seen the kind of magic before and one of them asks if what they are experiencing is really magic the magic also affects Mizua and she wonders what's happening too mind you Kuzanagi hasn't even used magic at them he is just calmly walking to meet Tadano for his punishment as he gets nearer to Tadano he stretches out his hands at the stupid boy and it's as though Tadano wants to pee on his body he is terrified subconsciously tears fill his face and he looks in awe that scene has to be one of the strongest that has ever happened in their school and there is no no way the authorities won't find out what is happening one of the teachers enters their class he asks them what is the sound he has heard from that class just now and asks if someone is using magic in the class none of the students can't give a response to those two questions because for a fact they also don't know the teacher asks again but this time he directs it to a student he asks Kuzanagi to tell him what is going on at this point Kuzanagi has stopped his revenge Kuzanagi smiles at the teacher and tells him that nothing has happened in their classroom he confuses the teacher further 
father by saying probably someone used magic outside the class but the teacher says there is no magic club activity happening on the school ground but Kuzanagi tells him it is possible that a student outside of the department is using magic as he wishes he says magicians are keen on using magic and a person may have been doing as he wishes he says that magicians are always so keen on using their magic however the teacher notices the smoke in their class he asks and Kuzanagi says that the smoke had come from outside the class however despite the inconsistency in his statement the teacher still wishes to believe him he says that since it's Kuzanagi giving that report then he is sure the report must be true he threatens that if there is indeed a magician using magic unnecessarily outside the school he is going to ensure he finds the culprit he tells the rest of the students to return to their seats sending him out of the class Kuzanagi smiles at the teacher and apologizes for the trouble he has gone through by coming to their class he however knows the teacher won't forget such an incident so he feels he will have to create false evidence to close the case down completely visual wonders about the type of person he is she looks at him with fear in her eyes Tedano on the other hand is still hell-bent on punishing Kuzanagi if only he knows he will be the one to be punished eventually Kuzanagi looks at the magic that Tadano has used on him he thinks about the magic level of the students and says that even if they are just students their magic level is actually quite low he feels they can't ever in their life be able to take a monster down with that weak magic that they have he feels that although there is no calamity around that will deserve these kids fighting but at least they must be monsters around since the students are weak he feels he needs to check out for the monsters around Later that evening he magically jumps to the Shibuya at the old Shibuya he looks around and he sees that it isn't the Shibuya he knew before he jumps around the entire city trying to see if there are monsters around that. He can sense however after doing that for a while he doesn't sense any monster around although the entire place is in ruins he can't find any monster and he assumes that the police have taken all the monsters out as he walks around he eventually senses a faint sense of a monster he could see the aura of the monster coming from far away he tries to sense everything in his environment government and he senses that there is also a lone human in that place he tries to follow the smell and at the place the monster is the monster is attacking a young girl the lady is terrified and she falls down she begs the monster to get away from him and the monster threatens to kill her Kuzanagi jumps there and fights the monster who roars and fights him back he successfully defeats the monster and he goes to meet the girl he looks at her clothes and sees the police badge he assumes that she is a police magician he turns to leave her but warns her that she should be careful next time she is coming to that area she appreciates him for saving her however after he leaves she wonders who he is and how he has that much power she comments that he looks like a great magician and she also tries to remember how he had killed the monster and she remembers that he didn't even chant at all before using magic Kuzanagi has known that if he meets anyone and they watch him fight they may be interested in knowing more about him that's the reason he had used a scarf to cover his face before he came to that ruin seeing how the lady is also interested in knowing who he is he feel feels he is actually right to keep his face hidden the reason behind this is because he has just reincarnated and he doesn't want to stand out among the weak magicians in that city talking about weak mages he wonders how weak the lady could be for her to have been in such danger with a monster that has just low level powers he comments that police magic levels in that city have also gone very low concluding from everything he has experienced in this world and from the look of things he doubts that that there is anyone in that world at that period that can actually defeat a real monster it's not just the students mages that are weak even the police as well that seals all his assumptions about magicians in that timeline and he says that they have certainly become very weak he feels that due to their weak nature they most likely need his power since he is already at the ruins maybe he should actually kill the monsters surrounding the city first upon returning to school the next day as the teacher has told them the day before that day will be their magic power test they get to school and the teacher informs them they will be measuring their magic power he shows them the crystal with the time signal on it he had advises them that they should make sure they get their amount and their attribute that day telling them that a maid's magic amount and attribute are the most important values if they want to become professional magicians on the other hand Kuzanagi looks at the device they have brought to their class he wonders if he can't measure his power without using the device he is ready to pardon the students for their vague magical knowledge but he finds it ridiculous that even the teachers do not know some of the basic things in magic he is worried and scared for that generation and he sweats profusely thinking in his mind that magic perception should be the 
the foundation of magic Mijua speaks to him she asks him if that time will be a good time for them to talk all the students are shocked that Mijua and Kuzanagi are talking together he immediately figures out what's going on while looking at the face of all the students he realizes that this is the first time he is speaking with Mijua she introduces herself to him as the second daughter from the magic noble house of Mijua Mijua Yuka well that can be quite expected considering the noble aura she eludes however Kuzanagi doesn't even know what a magic noble is he asks her what magic noble means but she is shocked that he doesn't know she gestures at him shockingly and asks if he really doesn't know what it means so she explains who they are to him she tells him that they are from the leading four noble houses the head of magicians that gets Kuzanagi more surprised because in the world he had come from nothing like noble houses existed and even in his world he has never heard of the house of Mijua she looks at him furiously and he gauges her magical power after gauging it he comments that her magic power isn't that great too considering that she is proud about her family being one of the noble magicians he feels that for a family of prominent magicians their power is sure low the way he had behaved during her conversation with him makes her regret coming to have a conversation with him in the first place she had assumed that he would jump at the offer of speaking with someone like her the same way every student does but she is disappointed that he isn't impressed she wonders what is wrong with him in her mind she says that after she had generously started a conversation with him he is behaving quiet nonchalant she wishes that he will be grateful to her for speaking with him and she hopes he would honor her but he doesn't give her any of that tedano on the other hand is angry to see a loser like kuzanagi having a conversation with mizua he wonders why mizua has gone to have a conversation with someone like kuzanagi after inhaling and understanding all the explanations mizui has given him about their family kuzanagi Kuzanagi asks her what business her family has with him, and why she is talking with him that makes Mizua more angry she feels that the more he talks to her the more he pisses her off, but she really wishes to establish a conversation between them so instead of getting angry immediately she tries to take deep breaths and calm herself down. She reminds herself that she is a noble woman, and she shouldn't get that angry at a commoner so she should think of her. Dignity and calm down Kuzanagi really doesn't care about her he wonders what is wrong with her, and why she has come. To to speak with him he isn't wrong as there was indeed a reason why Mijua have come to speak with him that day she had been thinking about how he could get hit by magic and still come out unscathed and she believes there had to be a reason behind that and she has come to meet him so she could find out what the reason is after thinking about what she has to say she eventually speaks she tells him she wants to speak about the day before before she speaks the teacher returns to the class and calls the people chit chatting in the class to get ready for their measurement the idea of measuring magic really doesn't go well with Kuzanagi but it is a great opportunity to get away from the ridiculous conversation Mijua wants to have with him so he smiles happily to measure she tries to call him back so he can answer her question but he walks away so she assumes that since he is going for measurement she will see his true power after his assessment it's Tadano's turn for his assessment he is still full of pride about his ability he goes there and does his measurement his magic power is 1000 and his attribute is fire he is glad that his magic power amount has increased from his last assessment looking at Tadano's amount in the scale Kuzanagi says that if that fire was 1000 then the measuring standards haven't changed for the past 50 years at least that's the only thing that hasn't changed the next student to have her measurement is Mijua the teacher calls her and she goes for her measurement after her measurement her result comes out and her magic power amount is 2000 while her attribute is water she looks like the strongest in their class and the students are amazed about her numbers and how strong she is the teacher tells Mijua and Tadano that their magic powers are at the top of that year's level and they will both make fantastic magicians the students compliment Titano that his great numbers are quite expected from him as the great Titano of the fire magic prodigy Fusanagi looks at the way everyone in the class is amazed because of just 1000 and 2000 thousand levels of powers he is irritated at the way they are behaving and he says it has to be a joke as Mijua is really at the top of the class with just 2000 in the world he knows of her level of skill isn't much better than that of an amateur Mijua goes to meet him to know how he feels about her magic power amount and her strength she brags to him that powers of that amount are the true power of the house of Mijua she sees that he isn't giving her the admiration eyes that all the other students are giving her she wonders why he looks so proud and hopes that he wouldn't look at her with that kind of face she looks forward to his response about 
about her level of skills but he doesn't have anything to tell her because her pride seems unbearable to him the teacher eventually calls Kuzanagi for his measurement just before he goes to measure the students start gossiping about him and they say that he was ranked at the bottom the year before they comment that he is impressive at studying but his talent in magic is absolutely nothing before he gets to the measuring crystal Tadano mocks him he tells him that he has no talent and he calls him a he tells him that he should embarrass himself in front of Mizua Mizua is also anticipating the result of his measurement she wonders how much magic he has for him to survive a magical attack however she still feels proud that no matter how great he is he can't beat her with her number he also doesn't know much about the measuring thing he gets to the front of the device and he wonders what he can do he is considering that he doesn't want to garner attention to himself because he has just reincarnated he feels that back in those days he really stood out with his skills and it was really much of a pain for him so he wonders if he should hold back a bit of his power but no the students have mocked him so much and he really should show them what he is really made of he touches the crystal for his test as he determines that he will give the test his all and if that device and indeed measure the power of a great sage then it should triumph what follows the experiment can't be quantified with words instead of the attribute to show just an attribute multiple colors are showing forth and the crystal can't quantify what is happening the students watching don't understand what is happening including Mizuha she wonders what is really going on the numbers on the result device keep changing fire shows water shows an even wind the ray of the energy almost blindfolds the students eyes so much that most of them have to cover their eyes with their hands the ones who aren't covering their eyes look and all this is above what anyone has ever experienced and even the device can't bear what it is facing the device breaks looking at what is happening kuzanaji feels the device broke after he got too serious with the test he stands there and he looks at the students commenting that no one there could sense his magic power hour they look so weak and he wonders if they are really capable of becoming magicians the energy is really high and after it reduces a bit the teacher asks the students if any of them are hurt although they are in pain and sitting on the floor it is quite manageable so they tell him that they are okay the teacher asks Kuzanagi if he is okay too and he says he is fine the teacher who doesn't know that it is Kuzanaga's power which had caused the blast tells him that he is really lucky and he was right in the middle of the explosion he says that was the first time he had seen a measuring device gets destroyed but he assumes it could have been a defective device irrespective of what could have been the reason that isn't good and now they won't know Kuzanagi's magic power amount or even his attribute Kuzanagi asks him if it is really bad that they can't know his amount or attribute and the teacher explains to him that they split students into groups for combat class and they were going to decide on his group after seeing their results and now that they can't see his result he doesn't know what to do he calls Tadano and he asks him if he can take Kuzanagi into his group that seems like an opera opportunity for Tadano to show forth his power and skills and bully Kuzanagi more so he is excited at the opportunity as you can assume he tells the teacher that he will gladly take Kuzanagi to his group the teacher feels he can leave Kuzanagi into Dano's hands and he even says that if Kuzanagi is with Kuzanagi he can be rest assured that he is in good hands Tadano gives Kuzanagi an evil I tell him that he is looking forward to him being in their group their teacher takes them to old Shibuya when they arrive he narrates that there were monsters that were still inhabiting places that were severely destroyed by the great calamity hence the Shibuya is abandoned however at intervals magicians and police subjugate monsters there and the academy students are required to help with the monster subjugation he tells them that they don't have to be afraid and that more than half of the monsters have been taken out by the pro magicians so they wouldn't have to do too much Kuzanagi hadn't expected that they would be given practical classes but he feels even students should at least be able to take out a few monsters since they will even work in groups to take out the monsters he remembers that he had come to that same place the night before but he feels there is something weird around there he is sure that he took out all the monsters he found at that place the night before and yet he can still send some monsters around he also feels that there is no sign of disaster around so he can't understand why there are monsters around and why monsters are showing up around there the students are excited about competing in the project and they all brag that they won't lose seeing the way they have taken the entire idea of monster subjugation as a joke he says that they are having a practical class so he doesn't know why they are that carefree as the class start Miswa looks for him around the crowd 
crowd as though she wants to gauge how good he will do that day the teacher commands them that the practical class has started and they should ensure they work in groups so they will be safer Tedano calls out for Kuzunani since he should be on their team but Kuzunaji doesn't answer him instead he walks away and rests his back on a wall Tedano tells him that he should remain in the safe zone so he won't get in their way when they are killing the monsters Kuzunaji looks at him irritated he says he's being mankind to Tadano and the young boy shouldn't get carried away by his kindness he says that he isn't going to go easy on him at that time he warns Tadano that he is also not interested in a friendship with him and if Tadano knows that he doesn't like him he should just leave him alone and ignore him Tadano still feels he is stronger he threatens to hit Kuzunaji but he can't do it so Kuzunaji asks him if it is the case that he likes Mizua Tadano gets furious his face turns red and he activates his fire magic he calls Kuzunaji a bastard and threatens that he will kill him this time around before he releases the spell at Kuzunaji he warns him that he shouldn't do it but Tadana thinks Kuzunaji is telling him not to do it because he wants to apologize to him he tells Kuzunaji that there is no point apologizing to him at that point but Kuzunaji tells him that he should look behind him he feels that it's a trick from Kuzunaji so he can get him distracted and he says that he won't get fooled by such childish tricks by Kuzunaji and he will hit him he eventually feels an evil aura behind him by the time he will turn there is a monster behind him all the students are scared including him he screams no way as his face shows signs of fear he wonders what kind of monster it is how it has gotten there to attack them and even why it had come for them especially because it is a demon soldier he wonders what a demon soldier is doing around there all his friends believe he is the strongest there they hype him up that if it is him he will surely win again the demon soldier and they beg him to please fight the demon he is obviously scared but he doesn't want to embarrass himself in front of his friends who have believed he is so strong he tells them that he will fight the monster and he will surely win because the monster is light work for him he throws his fight at the monster telling him to eat it and as he had said the monster swallows it he had expected that the monster would have been dead with his weak energy he tells his friends that he has finished the job and they commend him that he is so good only for them to see the monster coming out of the fire smoke subconsciously Tedano sweats the monster has come out of his fire without any injury not even a scratch looking at them from behind Kuzunaji knows that there is no way a demon soldier could be taken down with a level 1 fire magic like Tadano's on the fact that he had attacked the monster gets him more angry he walks toward the group of stupid boys angrily they are terrified Tadano has fallen on the floor and he is waiting for his death he is crying and throwing down spits from his mouth he says he is going to die there immediately the monster soldier sees Kuzunaji behind them and he turns back a little Kuzunaji walks towards the frightened boys he tells them that apparently even the monster can tell who is stronger than them all Kuzunaga's aura changes to blue and he walks towards the monster the monster already feels his great magical power he opens his magic portal without any chant and he sends magic at the monster which also hits him immediately the students look at him Tedeno admits that there is no way that monster could have been defeated with a level 1 magic the students feel that Kuzunaji can't defeat the monster too and they say that they are going to die thereafter hitting the monster for the first time Kuzunaji activates the level 2 magic rock break he hits the monster with it and then activates his level 1 magic give arrow the fire shines brightly and the students standing behind him are affected he comes out from the battlefield without any injury and he walks toward them Tadano can't believe his eyes he wonders what the had just happened and what he had seen he wonders if Kuzunaji had indeed killed a demon soldier on his own he refuses to believe what he has witnessed with his own eyes and he says it is impossible he had thought Kuzunaji is the weakest in their class and he couldn't imagine that a person like Kuzunaji could really defeat a demon soldier walking away and thinking of the entire scenario Kuzunaji says that even his level 1 magic can defeat a demon soldier however something is more shocking to him which is the fact that a demon soldier is at Shibuya he says it is very strange for a demon soldier to be at that place and the fact that it appeared a day after he had come there physically to kill all the monsters makes it more weird he is scared and he considers what had happened as a bad omen before a disaster he wonders if the situation they are in is actually more pressing than he is expecting he remembers the former calamity how people died on the street how young kids are 
are found in the fire crying with their teddy how he had single-handed jump to save a little girl it's really a war he doesn't want to experience again regardless he says that even if the calamity is to happen again he will save everyone again the boys are still behind him wondering what is happening they say to each other that he has defeated a demon soldier tedano doesn't know what to expect and you must applaud him for being the first to suspect what no one has suspected he asks himself if that is indeed the kuzanaji he knew before he hits the wall in anger because he is angry he has been defeated by someone he had underestimated unknown to them all that mizua is standing behind the wall with her team she confronts a monster and she uses level one magic aqua saucer her party members are excited and they say that is something they could have expected from a prodigy like her however she is so proud that she feels their compliments aren't deserved she feels something as minute as that shouldn't surprise them that much and she comments that ordinary people are such a drag she hypes herself with the reason they are that way is because she is a genius and they can't help it if only she really know those who the genius in their classes is at that point that she had noticed tanano and kuzananga's group she had watched the way they are talking to kuzanagi and she tells her colleagues that she will leave them to continue the adventure at the same time she goes to spy on the other group she walks near her and she sees that he is being bullied again the scene seems interesting and she doesn't want to miss it she remains behind the wall and she sees when the demon soldier arrives she quickly hides behind the wall wondering if what she has seen is really a demon soldier she watches as tadano and the other boys have fallen to their legs and are terrified she comments that what they have experienced isn't what they can take on no matter how great they think they are she feels she needs to help them defeat the monster and she tries to join them because she feels she can at least do that as the member of the legendary mizua family as she runs there to tell them to run the ray of Kuzanaga's attack blindfolds her too she sees the rock and the fire which Kuzanagi has used to defeat the demon and she wonders what she is seeing she asks herself if that is indeed Kuzanaga's magic she remembers that Susan argue they once know in their class she can recall that he used to be extremely timid and he has no aptitude for magic so she wonders what could have changed and she comments that it is as if he is a different person entirely now also she recalls that when she saw him use those magic she didn't hear any chanting at all which means he used magic without chanting and they all know that only great mages can use magic without changing also she wonders how he could beat a demon soldier with just level one magic because she could see he used just level one magic she knows that a demon strength is determined by its number of crystals and that is also the way ranking is established in the demon's world a magical beast is of rank six and he has one crystal a demon soldier is of rank five and he has two crystals next to them are the demon captains who are of rank four and they have three crystals the next is the demon general they are rank three and they have four crystals and the second rank is the demon king they are of rank two and they have five crystals the greatest of them all is the demon god she is in rank one and she has six crystals the number of ranks which is effective for killing each demon is fixed and all all these are common sense for all modern magicians she knows so well that they need at least level 3 magic to defeat a demon soldier so she feels it is impossible for a level 1 mage to defeat the demon soldier she sees him coming towards her and she hides again it is at that point that she wonders why she is hiding she turns and hides better when she sees him and he comments that peeking around is actually a nice hobby to have she asks him how he had known that there was someone peeking around and he tells her that if she is a mage he will be crazy not to know that she is around she comes to meet him wondering how he could sense her he asks her if they can sense magic too he realizes that they really can't sense magic and he walks away disappointed she calls out for him and tells him to wait she asks him what the hell he has just done and tells him to explain what has happened but he doesn't answer her he keeps walking and he gets to the top of the ruins he looks at her from below him and comments good grief he decides that he needs to check around the ruins to be sure that there is nothing wrong he checks and he sees some small demon he is relieved that there are no demon soldiers left but he can still have a quite number of magical beasts around he thinks of what had happened earlier considering that even mizua who they have considered an excellent students acted surprised because he defeated a demon soldier than the other students around will have a hard time against magic beasts so to help the students he decides that he should reduce the number of magic beasts around he uses his range to search for their location and his range only covers the area around shibuya station standing right there and targeting all the magic these surround his range he uses a level 2 skill magic called the magic barret and the magic flies around like a shooting star the students see the shining star around them and they wonder what it is some of them assume it is a shooting 
star however since Mijua is smart she feels. It could be magic she sees it's magic with multiple magic abilities the monsters are weakened by the quantity of. The magic it is too much and they can't take it anymore there are some monsters in front of some set of students and the students are terrified the magic hits the monster even before it can attack the girl after the monster dies her. Kali comes to check up on her asking if she is okay standing by the top of the ruins Kuzanagi feels excited. To kill all the beasts in that ruin with just one magic step he looks down and he sees that all the monsters in the ruins have been scattered he feels scared that he has overdone the magic again he intended to kill just some of the monsters so the students could kill the rest but he ended up killing most of the monsters he regrets his action because the class won't be able to proceed in the practice now that most of the monsters are dead he feels he really needs to hold himself back next time so he won't overdo things he decides to leave that part of the ruins and go to a quiet place he flies around and eventually finds a place he stops there and while looking around he considers the steps he has been making since he had gotten to that world he feels there is no reason for him to hide his power more than necessary but due to his past experience he knows that standing out is such a pain and he asks the teacher arrives and looks at the amount of magic beasts that have been killed he couldn't have expected that there would be such a large amount of magic beasts left he asks how there could be that many beasts considering that most of the beasts should be the hunted down by professional magicians he thinks about the fact that most of the beasts were killed by just a single strike he wonders who could have done that he isn't even considering that it could have been any of his students and he says that could only be done by a very skilled magician he figures that the mage had used null attribute magic and the ability to fire countless magic bullets as null attribute magic and in all his life he has never seen a thing like that before however he is thankful that someone had used that magic in the ruins because without it things would have been troublesome as there is no way. The students could have defeated the beasts on their own he is still thinking about the multiple bullet magic he knows. That firing two of those bullets would have been no big deal but when the number reaches six and above it is probably not going to be any of his students job the students who have also assumed the practice was just a walk on. The cake are surprised they ask themselves why there are so many magical beasts around they are thankful that they hadn't died because they know they all nearly died with those beasts their teacher feels he has risked their lives. He bows to them to apologize and tells them he was also informed that the police had cleared most of the beasts, which was why he had brought them he says it is also his fault because he should have also confirmed from the school's side before coming there he begs them again telling them that he is truly sorry for putting them all in danger however the students don't understand how they are still alive they ask him if someone has come to save them but he tells them that he also doesn't. No the young girl tells him that she was asking for the person who had saved them because she wanted to thank him she was also confronted by a beast and if the beast hadn't died in her presence she would have been dead the teacher feels the person who had saved them was probably not a police or an official mage so he assumes that the person could be an illegal magician however even if he is an illegal magician he has indeed saved them all they all appreciate him for saving them and they scream a thank you to mr stranger magician just in case he can still hear them kuzanaji hears them and he smiles the students walk back to their school and on their way the talk of the town was what had happened they ask each other if they saw what had happened and they say they wonder what it is Kuzanagi looks at them going and he concludes that no one is injured and they are all fine he is relieved about that because he doesn't want to lose anyone to beasts again he sees Tedano in his squad and although they are now looking at him with a more remorseful faces he sees that they are also fine Mijua on the other hand doesn't know what to take on what has happened she keeps thinking about the fact that he had defeated a demon and soldier with level 1 magic and she thinks about the infinite magic too she wonders if he is the one who had also used the infinite magic and if that is the case then he has the fire attribute and also no attribute magic she doesn't want to believe that it's possible because she feels no student can use two magic attributes so she is sure he also can't use it too she concludes that she is probably overthinking what has happened and there is no way Kuzunaji can be all that she is thinking she concludes that the person who had used the null attribute is definitely a different person and it can't be Kuzanagi but what she knows for a fact is that he can beat a demon. Soldier she wonders what kind of person he is and where he has gotten his powers from the boys from Tadano's group also. Have the same feeling as Mijua they wonder if he is the one that had created the shooting stars however Tadano doesn't want to believe that he says it isn't possible but his colleagues remind him that Kuzanagi indeed beat a demon. Soldier in their presence Tadano can no longer bear their excess words he screams at them and tells them to shut up threatening that he will kill them if they keep disturbing him with mindless noises his friends wonder what has gone wrong with him 
and why he is behaving that way Tedano keeps thinking about Kuzunagi he says there is no way that small fry which is what he thinks Kuzunagi is can be so strong he feels there is something fishy going on his friends also support what he has said they claim that what they have witnessed is weird and there is something going on they can all remember that Kuzunagi was a coward some days ago they wonder if he is cheating in some kind of way and Tadano is angry that he made a fool out of him in front of his friends he refuses to accept that kind of defeat and if indeed Kuzunagi is cheating the system he threatens he will make Kuzunagi reveal his true character after school Kuzunagi walks home alone as he does on his way he sees the schoolboys led by Tadano waiting for him they tell him that they are waiting for him when he sees the awful look on Tadano he tells them that they are so persistent he advises that they can use the time they are using to bully students around to actually study magic and that will be a better use of their time Tedano screams at him he still assumes that Kuzunagi is cheating his way at school so he calls him a cheat Fuzunagi on the other hand doesn't understand what Tadano means when he calls him a cheat but Tadano asks him to stop playing dumb he says that he knows there is no way Kuzunagi could have used the type of magic he used at the ruins so he is sure Kuzunagi has employed some dirty tricks their level of reasoning seems low to Kuzunagi he can't imagine that there are people who are that dumb he comments that they definitely can't be reasoned. With he tries to leave but Tadano asks him to come with him claiming that he will give him props for not running away. But Kuzunagi tells him that there is no need for him to run away and he doesn't intend to do so Kuzunaga's guts irritate. Tadano he yells at Kuzunagi asking him to stop spouting nonsense he says that he knows Kuzunagi can't use his magic there and if he can he should use it Tadano goes nearer to him and he hits him with his fist his friends also join him and they all hit Kuzunagi they ask Kuzunagi what's happening with him and if he can't do anything without his magic he threatens that he is so angry at Kuzunagi and even if Kuzunagi begs him he won't forgive him he hits. Kuzunagi asks asking him to die from fist hitting to leg kicking these bunch of bullies keep beating Kuzunagi hoping that they are hitting him but in his mind he knows that they should just forget about hurting him because all that they are doing to him isn't even scratching him at all and that's because his power automatically defends him against hits like that so no matter how much they hit him it won't even affect him and he won't feel it he is annoyed because the kids don't look like they will let him go if he isn't injured he considers pretending to get hit so he falls down so they may think they are doing something they continue hitting him because they are enjoying it and after a while Mizuha Pierce immediately Tadaro sees her his countenance changes and he calls her name even before Mizuha asks him what he is doing he has started explaining himself he tells her he isn't doing anything and they are just playing around however she has eyes and she can see what they are doing she responds to him that she knows that he is bullying Kuzunagi again she is angry at him because it doesn't sound well that the students of their magic academy are actually bullies she asks him if he isn't ashamed of himself for doing such a thing he feels humiliated especially because it is in the presence of a lady he likes but instead of him to accept fault for what he has done he still passes the blames on Kuzunagi saying that the reason Mizua is angry at him is because of Kuzunagi he feels the reason Mizua is disgusted with him is because of Kuzunagi Mizua goes nearer to Kuzunagi and she drags him up she tells him that they should get out of there together and they leave Tedano sees Mizua holding hands with Kuzunagi and it seems as if his brain has disappeared he gets extra angry at Kuzunagi and if it's possible he can really kill him he really can hold his anger and since Mizua is already angry at him he decides just to do all he has to do he screams that he will kill Kuzunagi and he activates his fire magic at them even before activating the magic Kuzunagi already feels what will happen he screams oh god because he knows what Tadana wants to do Mizua also turns to her back and she sees the magic aura she calls Tadano asking him what he is doing instead of stopping Tadano and his stupid friends activate their magic together Mizua knows if that magic hits anyone it could be really dangerous she tries to protect Kuzunagi from the effect of that magic but if only she knows that he doesn't need her protection after Tadano finishes with what he wants to do he is really satisfied with himself he says that he is sure that even cheating can help Kuzunagi against that much power the other students who have joined Tadano in the evil act immediately start regretting
regarding their action they look at the impact of the fire and they see that it looks bad and the probability that Kuzunaji could survive that attack is low they wonder if he has really died as. Though that wasn't their intention in the first place Tedano is really satisfied his smiles are so radiant and I really hope that smile will last long he plans the excuse he will give the teachers at school when they ask them what has happened he plans he will tell them that they had mistakenly used magic outside the school and it got out of their control and Kuzunaji got in the middle of the magic fight and since he is weak he got injured or may be dead he tells his colleagues that will be their narration of what had happened there he sees the impact of that attack and he also admits that they may have gone far the whole ground is split into two and the impact is crazy coming out of that attack and scathed and without any injury Kuzunaji tells Tedano that he had tolerated him thinking he was just a brat but seeing how he behaved that day his stupidity can only be cured by death so it is indeed time for him to discipline Tedano it turns out he had dodged the attack so it wouldn't injure Mizua and he had also protected her so she is without injury too they both come out together and Tadano is shocked that Kuzunaji is still alive he asks Kuzunaji how come he is still alive even though he got hit by that kind of magic Kuzunaji is more angry that Tadano not only attacked him but he also sent fire to Mizua who wasn't involved in the issue issue they had beforehand he asks Tadano how rotten he is but Tadano refuses to admit his fault again he says that both Mizuha and Kuzunaji were both at fault in that situation and they had both made a fool out of him he refuses to give up and he activates his magic again he claims that if Kuzunaji refuses to die he will keep attacking him till he dies Houston Augie raises his little finger and he opens his magic circle the circle is so small and the boys laugh at him because of his weak circle they ask him which kind of crappy magic circle he is opening they activate their circle too and tell him that they will ensure he dies that time Kuzunaji is exhausted of their excesses he commands magic drink and a yellow and green flower blooms. From the small circle the boys have called crappy the boys wonder what the hell the flower is and they see it as it comes towards them and surrounds them they struggle to break free from the grip of the flower and they scream that it should get away from them the flower magically drains all their energy until they have no strength left they collapse on the floor and lay their Fusanaji. Because she doesn't know anything about the magic he has just used she wonders what had happened and the reason Tadano and his gang are all unconscious after dealing with the stupid boys it's time to go home so Kuzunaji carries his bag and turns to leave but Mizua calls him back she begs him to wait a minute she asks him what was that magic he had used she asks him what has happened and reminds him that he isn't supposed to be able to use magic properly she feels he isn't the same Kuzunaji they all know in their schools so she asks him who exactly he is he realizes he has done too much those questions aren't ones he has answers for and he comments that everyone happening is so annoying he reminds her that he had just saved her from dying and rather than asking him questions she should be saying something else she admits that she should be appreciating him him for helping her and says she will give him her regards for helping her she appreciates him and then returns to her questions she begs him to answer her questions however she checks her front and she can't find him again she wonders where he has gone within seconds and calls out for him in tears considering what had happened that day at night Kuzunaji finds his way to old Shibuya again he comes and saying that he had a bad feeling so he had come to check it out just as he had assumed he killed all the monsters in that same ruin in the afternoon and the ruins are full of monsters again he wonders if that is some kind of bad omen he has to kill all the monsters and he says that if the monsters are coming to just Shibuya he is strong enough to handle them however he can also sense monsters in some other places he assumes that the monsters are too much for the police and the magicians are of no good either considering all that there is no way he can kill all the monsters in the whole of Japan alone he needs someone or better still a set of people who are as skilled as him or a little bit more skilled than the average people he has been meeting in that city to help him out he wonders what he can do about the situa he is in he really needs to come out with a plan before he does that he feels the need to wipe out the monster in that place first and he has to do it in a careful manner so he wouldn't stand out again he activates his magic ring and he uses his null magic again on the other hand an older man is walking back home after drinking he walks and sings about how drunk he is and he doesn't notice that a monster is looking at him from behind a nearby fence the monster opens his mouth to swallow the drunk man from behind but before the monster can achieve his aim the null magic which Kuzunaji has activated hits him and he falls the man hears the noise of what has transpired behind him 
he turns, but he can't find anything there. He concludes that what he had felt must have been his imagination. Little does he does he know that Kuzunagi had jumped behind him to drag the monster behind the wall. As the man walks away, Kuzunagi wonders if he has been caught, but concludes he is still safe. Well, he is actually saved from the man because he didn't see him, but another young girl had seen him when he jumped to that place to save the man. The girl has taken a video of the incident. She watches it again and she sees she really captured the complete video she sees the video as a viral worthy material and she plans to spread it across the world upon returning to school the following day the school authority has found out about what happened between the students their teacher tells the headmaster and some students specifically Mizua and Kuzunagi it has come to their notice that some of their students were seen using magic outside the school ground he says that if what they have found out is true then they have no choice but to expel the students found using magic outside the school Ted Eno is also part of the students that the head teacher has called so he tells them that he wants them to explain what had happened outside the school the day before Tedano screams he says that he wasn't the one who had used magic and it was Kuzunagi he points at Kuzunagi telling the teacher that Kuzunagi came to them first looking for a fight looking at how the lies are flowing from Tedano's mouth Kuzunagi says Tedano lies so casually he feels impressed by Tedano's lying skills and wonders how a person can lie and it will immediately look like the truth seeing the way the city situation is going if he keeps his mouth shut he will take the blame for the entire situation so he decides that he has to talk too although he feels it is a drag he really has Tai explained himself so he steps out to tell the teacher that what Tedeno had said was all lies but before he speaks Mizwa steps into the conversation and screams that everyone Tedeno has said is all lies she explains that Kuzunagi was getting bullied by Tedano and his friends and it was also Tarano and his friends that used magic first the teacher asks her again if what she means by Tedano using magic first means Kuzunagi also employed the use of magic she admits that Kuzunagi also used magic but tells the teacher that he only did it for self-defense and he didn't do anything bad Kuzunagi looks at her and expressed confusion and shock he had avoided her the day before and he didn't expect that she would be the one defending him that day again instead of admitting defeat Tadano tries to lie again he says that they hadn't done anything bad but before he finishes Mizua asks him to shut up his mouth she turns to him asking him what kind of person bullies an other and then blames the bullied person when it is time for the consequence she asks him if he isn't ashamed of himself Tedano keeps shifting blame he says that it is Kuzunagi that is a small fly that isn't worthy of their prestigious school so he was just helping the school clean up their trash that statement gets Mizua more angry she declares that if there is someone who isn't worthy of their school then it is him he claims that he is worthy of the school he says he is at the top of the class and the only one who is worthy of standing beside her in the class and not that small Kuzunagi she doesn't understand what he is talking about but he begs her to open her eyes he tell her that she should cover up for Kuzunagi and she should join him he says she should look at him and become his woman the idea irritates her she immediately tells him that there is not one chance that she will accept to be with him he gets more furious and he is pissed at her but she keeps talking she says she has rejected him because he is a bully she has rejected him because he is violent and she has also rejected him because the timing of his confession makes zero sense to her Kuzunagi pities Tadano although he knows the stupid boy deserves what has come for him he still feels bad about how Mizui has spoken to him and feels it is too brutal the teacher sees the entire situation and the truth is glaring he says it looks like it is Tadano and his friends that are at fault and in Indeed Kuzunagi only use his magic to defend himself. The headmaster announces his verdict. He says they don't need people who use magic for selfish desires in their schools. So the people who are at fault are hereby expelled from school. They scream and beg the school to Dano's friends regret what they have done. And they explain that they had only done what Tedano told them to do. The head teacher tells Kuzunagi and Mizua to return to their classes. So they leave the dean's office and go back to class. Mizua is still furious about what Tedano has done. She tells herself that the boy is the worst that she has ever found she says she has been this pissed off in a while and Titano sure broke a record Kuzunagi asks her what she thinks will happen to the boys now that they have been expelled and she informs him that they won't be able to become mages anymore she turns to Kuzunagi and addresses him too she tells him that he should also learn Tai defend himself and speak up for himself in his mind he reminds himself that he wanted to speak if she hadn't stood up rashly and spoken he looks at her in a confused manner and she asks what is wrong he remembers that she has come through to save him several times 
and he thinks about the times he had been at her mercy the first time was in the class when they got into a fight and she jumped in to save him and now at the dean's office she had jumped into the conversation tie save him he laughs at her and tells her she is a crazy good girl his compliments make her feel completely red she blushes and since she doesn't want him to see her in that condition she covers her face and walks away telling him she will go to the class first he looks at her and he suddenly gets realization indeed cousin Naji Manadu is dead and he has just been reincarnated into his body. He wonders if it's possible that Kuzanagi was bullied to death if was his death a normal car accident, or if it was staged. He really doesn't know the answers to these questions he only feels. Those guys were definitely guilty of doing something, and he hopes that all he is doing in that world at least pays off. At the dean's office, it turns out the person who had reported the incident wasn't an outsider, but a student of higher levels in the school. The dean recounts all that has happened. He tells the students that it was indeed reported that some students were using magic outside the school and a few students got caught in it that is true but no harm was done to the general public during the course of that fight the dean asked them why he had called him into that situation when no harm was done to the public the student explains that it was because the student who got caught was Mizua the dean appreciates the girl's efforts and for reporting the incident he tells her to give his regards to her father and she reminds him that her father is willing to invest in the school she leaves the office with her male friend whom she had visited. What he tells her that if what had happened is really true then it means but Kuzanagi is absolutely strong. Because fighting multiple mages would be nearly impossible for a mage who isn't very strong because he wouldn't be able to win unless there is a huge power discrepancy. He asks her if she thinks Kuzanagi is stronger than him but she says no she feels he can't be as strong as they are but she is interested in him since they are both interested. He wonders what they are going to do and she tells him they have to confirm his strength first and also his is competent as a mage and then they will decide whether the schools should expel Mizua she calls Mizua her sister and they also have quite a resemblance especially their hair features she is Mizua Ruka a third year S class student of the school the boy Katsuragi Ruji who is also a third year student and is in the same class as her accepts her proposition. Kuzanagi returns to the class he lies on his table, and he is exhausted from the peace in the class normally Tedano would have come to disturb him about twice he says that now that everything is peaceful he has lost his motivation to do anything the video the strange girl has taken of him the night before goes viral some of his classmates watch the video and they show each other they talk about the black mage and some say they know him thinking of what they are, saying he really doesn't know what a black mage is and he wonders if it's the same as a noble mage however he doesn't. Try to know more about the issue because he feels it doesn't concern him suddenly the teacher calls out for him he says that the students who couldn't get measured the last time are going to get measured now that gets Mizwa more excited at least she will get another opportunity to find out what Kuzanagi is really made up of she then sees that some senior students are entering her class and she sees her sister there she calls out for her asking what Ruka is doing in her class some other students have gone for their tests and again it is Kuzanagi's turn for his measuring and test the teacher asks him to start the magic power assessment he thinks of what to do because he had destroyed one of those machines in his last assessment so he plans to be careful this time around he touches it and as the machine starts reading he suddenly feels weak he removes his hand from the machine and rests on his leg the teacher asks him if he is okay he says he is fine the teacher looks at the machine and sees that they have managed to get a result that time around Mizua is disappointed because Kuzanaga's attribute is none and his amount of energy is 100. Ruka and her friend also look at the result which isn't what they were expecting to see and they are also so disappointed pointed the other students also rumor around about him they say that since his magic amount is 100 then it means he is the lowest in their class for the second time they also consider if it's possible for a person not to have any attribute they say that such is quite rare and it also means that he is totally Totally useless Ruji looks at the result he tells Ruka that there is nothing they are there to see and there is no truth behind Kuzanagi so the talk of him defeating the delinquents all by himself is just a lie Ruka can't hide her disappointment she tells Rudy that they should leave the class immediately as they are done with their business in that class Tusanagi still pretends to be weak he bends down to get back his energy and his classmates laugh at him asking if he is getting tired just from the reassessment they say that there is no way he won't be that tired and he has to end up that way since his magic power is really low the teacher goes to meet. 
Kuzanagi so he can encourage him he tells him that he doesn't have to think too much about what has happened he says. That the amount of a maid's magic power doesn't mean everything in life while every one of them has decided that with. The result Kuzanagi he has gotten he is really weak Mizua can't accept that result she has seen him in action twice. And believing that he has no magical power is trash she insists that something is definitely wrong she has. Seen him defeat the demon soldiers by himself and definitely he has the ability to use the dual attribute of fire and null she considers if he has adjusted his amount of magic power but she also can't believe that because she has never heard anything like adjusting your own amount of magical power before so she wonders what he has done for him. To get that weird result Kuzanagi keeps behaving weak he sweats and he rests he thinks in his mind that he has gotten a perfect result that won't make anyone suspect him he had to do some precise magic manipulation when he has taken the assessment and that isn't the reason he is feeling that weak he says that the magic manipulation is taking a toll on him but luckily for him he seems to have gotten a grip on it after the assessment he walks back to class with Mizra he doesn't know that she has also witnessed the assessment so he asks her if she was also in the assessment room when he did his assessment she tells him that she was there because she was curious about his magic power a little bit as they keep walking Ruka and Ruji command them to stop Fusanagi doesn't know who they are and in all the issues he has been passing through they have never appeared to him he asks them what they are and Ruka introduces herself as the eldest daughter of the Mizua house Mizuruka and she also tells him her colleague is Katsurajuriji she tells him they are both in their third year thinking of the name Mizua he looks at her and asks her if she needs something from him and why she had stopped him on the way but she tells him that she no longer has business with him she walks towards them and says that she has seen that he isn't when a match against the delinquents that people claimed he had defeated she looks at her sister and says that she heard Mizua was saved by a guy whose magic amount was barely 100 she looks at her disappointed and asks Mizua if what she has heard is true Mizua feels uncomfortable answering that question. She tells her sister that it is true Ruka infers that she is so weak and for a guy that weak to be the one saving her. She should just quit the academy Mizua asks her why she wants her to make that kind of decision but Ruka replies with another question asking Mizu if she had ever won against her even once before whether it was in academics or sports or even in magic training Mizua had never been at her level she had never failed to lose against him in everything and judging from all all that Ruka thinks she isn't suited to be a mage and Ruka feels she can be the only mage in their family. Which is more than enough Mizua doesn't want to accept that harsh decision against her she tries to talk back to her sister but Ruka tells her that all she needs to do is listen to her and do what she says she tells her again that she should quit the academy and enroll in a normal school Ruka asks her if she has heard and fearfully Mizua accepts what she has said and tells her yes the entire situation irritates Kuzanagi he tells Ruka that she is being quite arrogant it has to be disrespectful for someone like Kuzanagi to speak with Ruka especially with his low amount of magical energy so Ruka turns at him and asks him what he has said to her he doesn't keep quiet he keeps talking and says Ruka keeps talking non-stop without bothering to listen to what her younger sister has to say he says that the behavior Ruka has shown his arrogance and if it is not arrogance what else can it be called Ruka tells him that the conversation she is having with her sisters between family members and an outsider like him should stay out of it. However he asks her if she thinks she is having a conversation and he says to him it doesn't seem like she is having a conversation with her sister instead it sounds like she is ordering her sister around Ruka gets angrier she asks him what he has said and she calls him a bastard he keeps talking to her telling her that it is bad for her to course someone out of their own way of living and that is something even a family member shouldn't be allowed to do and that's the same with forcing someone to give up on their dreams Ruka doesn't want to admit that she is guilty she insists that her younger sister doesn't have what it takes to be a mage and she is sure of that because her younger sister hasn't won against her even once. Mizua also admits that Ruka is correct and she really doesn't have the talent to be a mage she says she has only been telling herself that she is a genius and she has the aptitude to be one when she has no one want to duel against Ruka. Contrary to how Mizua has stopped believing in herself that she will win Kuzanagi believes in her he tells Ruka that Mizua can win against her when Mizua doesn't believe what Kuzanagi has said about her and Ruka doesn't even feel threatened at all she asks Kuzanagi again if he really thinks Mizua can win in a duel against her Kuzanagi admits that it may be impossible 
possible for Mijua to win in that duel for now and Ruka says that's true, she will give them time to train well but in two weeks time he would like them to have a two on two magic duel Kuzanagi asks if she means what she has said she says yes and asks him if he is planning to run away now after spouting all the nonsense he has spoken to her he tells her he isn't running away from her and he says she will participate in the duel too he looks at Mizuya and asks her if she also wants to participate in the duel she is terrified because she already believes she isn't a good fit to fight her sister in fear she decides to give her answer will she accept the duel will they win and that's how the efforts part of this man wins well guys if you like this video and you want a second part comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel hit the bell and like the video but most important leave a comment until the next video